We're banning all imports of Russian oil and gas and energy. That means Russian oil will no longer be acceptable at U.S. ports, and the American people will deal another powerful blow to Putin's war machine. This is a move that has strong bipartisan support in the Congress and, I believe, in the country. Americans have rallied support, have rallied to support their Ukrainian people and made it clear we will not be part of subsidizing Putin's war. This made, we made this decision in close consultation with our allies and our partners around the world, particularly in Europe, because a united response to Putin's aggression has been my overriding focus to keep all NATO and all of the EU and our allies totally united. We're moving forward with this ban, understanding that many of our European allies and partners may not be in a position to join us. The United States produces far more oil domestically than all of European, all the European countries combined. You saw, it, you saw the clip. Joe Biden is going to be banning all imports of Russian oil, which doesn't make a lot of sense if you really think about it, because even though only it appears the total accounted, accounted amount that the U.S. imports from Russia is 8%. It accounts for 8%. Well, if you take away 8% of any import, you have to replace that 8% with something different. Now, they're already, Biden's or the administration, they're already sending envoys to Venezuela, uh, Iran, and they're sending envoys to Saudi Arabia to try and increase production so that they can decrease the price of the barrels. But there is a political reality there that we are not privy to. So Venezuela and Iran, the Americans have already put large, huge sanctions on those two countries. So President Nicolas Maduro of Venezuela signaled on Monday a willingness to increase his country's oil production if Russian supplies are shut out of the international market. Well, you see, the thing is with Venezuela... That country, they're never going to be politically aligned with the Americans. Never, 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 never. Because they will not agree politically. They see, they, the, why did they put sanctions on him in the first place? Because he's a dictator. He's, he, he's a fanatic. He is a fanatic. The only thing is he's a less powerful fanatic than Russia. So he's, you know, he's easier, easier to control than Putin. You can't control Putin. Now, let's see what Mr. Kravonich, Kavonich says. No, no one source, whether it's Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, Iran, the U.S. is going to be able in itself to come anywhere close to replacing the totality of Russian supply if all Russian exports were to be subject to sanctions. So it appears that the United States is really scrambling to try and make some, to try and, you know, cover the shortfall of the oil that's going to be apparent now that they've cut off Russian imports of oil and gas. You see, the thing is with Maduro, if you aid him and if you take away the sanctions, that's going to make him a lot more powerful. That's going to, you know, make him pop his collar and stuff like that. But, but, but that's the thing. Venezuela, Iran, all these countries, now they have extreme leverage against the United States of America. Why do they have extreme leverage? Because you need the United States needs something from these countries, which is oil, and they need it very badly. You see, the thing is with Biden, if Biden isn't able to take care of the problem with the prices going up, he's going to be voted out in the next election. You know the thing is the key the key with these politicians is to is to get reelected. Biden wants to get reelected. If he doesn't that's why he's going to be doing this. And given the fact that Venezuela, Iran and all these countries have, you know, they've got a lot of leverage here. I think the the United, the United States is going to be forced to raise the, to get to lift the sanctions. There's no doubt about that. Literally, no doubt about that. They have to get rid of those sanctions. That's going to make them more powerful. But they're, but they're only looking at this as an opportunistic moment. 
Venezuela doesn't give a fuck about America. Iran doesn't give a fuck about America. I mean, just look at what Bryce Mitchell said in his video. He, he, Bryce Mitchell literally broke it down perfectly. He doesn't know what's going on over there in Ukraine. So much political corruption. So much political corruption with Joe Biden and his son getting paid millions of tax dollars of the United States. United States tax dollars going to a foreign country. And the United States has people like veterans that need money, that are sleeping on the streets, homeless people. You still haven't solved the homeless crisis. You still haven't solved the Flint water crisis. You still haven't solved all these other domestic issues. But you want to go to Ukraine and invest billions of dollars overseas? Yeah, I understand Bryce Mitchell's point. He makes a great point in his in his little uh, monologue that he had. I don't think you guys really understand the ramifications of this because Russia is a major exporter of wheat. Ukraine is a major exporter of corn. Wheat and corn. That means the price of pizza is going to go up. The price of sunflower oil is also going to go up because sunflower oil, Ukraine is a major exporter of sunflower oil as well as Russia. So all of these different imports that we're getting from these different countries are just going to be so sky high. Everything is going to go up. The prices of everything is going to go up. There's going to be a supply chain crisis because it's a ripple effect. You see, the, the ripple effect is when there is one small problem, then it reverberates throughout the entire, the entire process. It's like a math equation, you know, if you make one mistake somewhere, the result's going to be completely different because you go through a whole process. One mistake in the chain, in the supply chain, one problem, it's like a house of dominoes, just going to fall over and fall apart. This is a global crisis. This is a problem for everyone around the world. I think everyone around the world should probably be thinking about this right now. Go out there and buy as much as you can in bulk. Because a few weeks down the line, everything is going to be so much more expensive. Everything is going to be so much more expensive. Ordering food much more expenses expensive look at the prices of gas now it's going up it went up 50 cent now it's going to go up even more now we're expecting a five percent increase in oil in oil prices and most people won't even be able to pay that which means some people might not even be able to go to work some people might not even be able to go to work and then if they can't go to work, they're not going to get paid. And if they don't get paid, they won't be able to pay their rent. They won't be able to pay their car note. They won't even be able to afford groceries. This is a global crisis that's going to be affecting us for debt for years. You, you can't just shut Russia out of the global market. That's going to reverberate and have consequences for all of us. I know, I know, Russia and Ukraine, things are going bad, but we need to have a different solution than just shutting an entire country that it's a global, Russia is a global exporter of so many different goods that we need. Russia is going to continue exporting to Southeast Asia and Africa and West Africa, North Africa. So I think they're going to be fine, but the prices in those regions are going to go up. Europe is in trouble. We're in trouble. We're fucked. We're, we're in big trouble because Ukraine is such a big exporter of wheat and barley, but we won't have access to those products in that market. The supply chain's already collapsed. There's no way they're going to be... There's no way they're, they're, they're able to send the supplies over to Europe now. Not possible. It's just not possible because it's chaos in Ukraine right now. You think, you think timely timely supply and... Timely deliveries of supplies are gonna be made are, are gonna make their make their way over to Europe. No. And once Vladimir Putin takes over, those supplies are over. That's done. That's a wrap. It's over for those supplies. But yeah, it is what it is. We'll see what happens. Thanks you thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all of you and I'm out. Peace.